Hi, my name is Peter Yang. I'm an editorial and commercial photographer, and I'm at Photo Shelter's Luminance 2012. I think as, the, as far as the future of photography, I, I really don't think images have changed that much since I started and since before then. I feel like it's the technology that's changing and it's what we're capturing that's changing. My clicker's over here. Whoa, that's loud. Okay. Freaking nervous. Um, hey, woo. Um, Barbara and I have a lot in common. Uh, we both photograph in LA quite a bit, so. Um, okay, there'll be more jokes like that, so please just, <laughs> yeah, woo. All right. Um, so. A little bit about me is I am from Texas originally. I grew up in uh, Dallas and Austin and uh, started out as a photojournalist uh, for many years, for four years. And um, I, loved, I loved the work and all the different things that I was able to photograph. But um, I realized into it that I um, really kind of had a certain vision for photos, and they, ha they have a word for that in newspapers, and journalism is, is unethical. Um, <laughs> so before I um, did any crazy things, I'm like, I should probably go do portraits or something like that. So um, I started out with Texas Monthly, and um, I was really fortunate that they saw something in me and ended up moving to New York and working hard and got a few breaks. and. Um, Really, um, really happy and blessed to be wherever, wherever I am, whatever's going on. So um, anyway, these are some photos behind me that have been done recently or in the past. And um, this one was for, for Rolling Stone. And uh, like once or twice a year, I get a shoot that, that my first reaction is like just utter excitement because I'm like the biggest fan of show in this world. And then like all the fear sets in, like, you know, what if I don't like them and then I can't enjoy the show anymore? Or what if, you know, what if they don't like me and then I can't like myself anymore? Or, <laughs> um, and it was just like weird situation where I had like way too much time to think about it. Like I, I never have more than a few weeks to think about it. And they're like, well, you want to do this shoot in, you know, four months or something. I was like, all right, well, I know what I'll be doing for the next four months, which is um, thinking of every single idea with uh, trampolines. I think I had jetpacks at one point, things on fire. I got really dark. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I had a cutout moon at some point. And um, I, I was probably driving my girlfriend crazy because every night was like, hey, let's talk about Breaking Bad and my ideas night. And, um, <laughs> I think one particular night I had this like biblical thing because I, I don't know who watches the show, but y you know, the way things are going, I'm like a Judas, like P Pieta, like Pieta, whatever kind of thing. And uh, my girlfriend's like, why don't you like use a lamb or something? That's kind of biblical. I was like, oh yeah, a lamb, that's great. And then from there, I was like, you know, here's, he's the, the getting evil dude, and he's like the innocent guy, and and um, and they really loved the idea, which which helped a lot. And we found the lamb, which took about a month because they're like that size. And then a week later, it's like, oh. so um, this was the image I really would have uh, loved to see on the cover, but um, but it still it still exists in in the world. Um. And then this was the other one. I, I thought I had this genius idea. I was like a, a, a body bag and like sneakers. I'm like, that'd be really funny as the, the chair. And then when I actually saw it there, and we had like this Penske truck full of all these props and stuff like that, and they put it together, and they're like, huh, isn't that what you wanted? And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, dude, that's really morbid and um, kind of sad. Um, so we kind of, quickly wrangled up a blanket and some different shoes 
part of this job is like having to come up with ideas all the time, which I'm, I'm like the, the biggest comer upper of ideas and then immediately thinking they're terrible and then coming up with the ideas and thinking they're terrible. And so um, at the end of the day, I have like 20 terrible ideas. But what I realized is that I um, always think like eating a sandwich will make a picture better. And I don't think I've done a sandwich in a long time. So, so um, it worked. It worked. I think it wouldn't be the same thing without a sandwich. So it's good. So um, with, uh, with this, this was another one I was excited about, but I only had like four days to get it ready, so it was a very smooth experience. Um, Mr. Colbert had his own idea to put money in his mouth, which, you know, you can't ask someone to do that, because if they get like salmonella or something, you feel really bad. But he's like, oh. It's like, all right, good luck, dude. Um, and then in the one on the, the other one, he, uh, he put this fat suit on, and people always like ask what great makeup artists we had to do the chin, and that's just his like amazing rubber face action. There's no makeup there. I do I do a lot of shoots where I don't have a lot of time with someone, and there's someone who's photographed quite a bit, and um, I was pretty excited to get this shoot of Donald Trump. Um, it was when he was running for president, like for two weeks or three weeks. <laughs> And um, having a few photo friends now, I will call up, um, I'll call up someone and say, hey, Chris, you know, Chris Buck, how was Donald Trump? And he's like, cool, but it's going to be a really fast shoot, so be ready for it. And um, I was told it was a 20-minute shoot. I figured that, that with my experience, you, you know, do the math and then probably like eight minutes. Like eight minutes was my guess. So um, shot up in his boardroom, and I had probably four different setups going at once, thinking that uh, if he didn't like one, we'd move on to the next one. But this is the one I really wanted to do because, um, you know, it's a gold log, and he's the thinker, I mean, right? <laughs> so um, we go, but I, I don't want to, like, go right to it, you know? I, like, I always have this vision that someone gets really, really mad at me and then leaves, so I'm like, I got to come out with a picture. So I just have like a really basic one. And there's like, there's like, you know, building in the background. He's against the window. And I'm like, well, if this is my only picture, it's got to be good, like somehow. Like something's got to be good about it. So I'm like, all right, let's dial up the hair light two stops. You know, it's, it's a little cheap, but it's, it's good. And um, so I take a couple of pictures of him. And uh, I'm, I'm ready to move on to this next one. He's like. It's like, oh, let, let me see that picture. I was like, ah, oh, crap. You know, that nuclear hair. I'm like, I'm screwed. So, so he looks at it, and he's like, that's really good. <laughs> so we move on to this one. I'm like, oh, great. We move on to this one, and I had done all these references, and I'm like, Mr. Trump, um, you know, Rodart did this, this it's an iconic image. You're an iconic businessman. Um, let's combine the two. I think it'd be really cool. And in my head, I'm like, he's not going to sit on that log. He's not going to do it. And I have all my printouts, and I'm showing it to him. And, and, and it's the moment where he's going to do it or not. And he's like, um, yeah, OK. So, so he goes and sits down, and I'm trying to show him. He's like, we don't have time for this. He like looks at it, and he's like posing himself. And I get it. And then after that shoot, he's like, let me see it again. And I was like, oh, damn it. Now this is it. So he looks at it, and he's like, it's even better than the last one. <laughs> and I get all four setups out. Each one's better than the last one. And I have learned that happiness in life is just loving yourself, like, in general. <laughs> and um, it's not always easy, but, you know. That's only up there because in my description, I said something about working with animals. And if you don't have any ideas, a taxidermy animal is always 50% improvement on your, on your picture. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, 
So in some shoots, there's some time and there's a little money to build, build some sets and things like that. And this was really fun. I um, worked with a good friend, Tara Marino, who, and um, her, her dude, Rudge. And we built this cool set. And there's even like a big weather station on the left side. And um, I, I arranged all the clocks because I wanted to contribute. And um, it was like kind of this funny shot, but I had them all arranged like sort of Vanity Fair, like different levels and like different, you know, poses and, and all that. And, um, and after it, I was like, you know, it could be really funny if they're just all sitting at these chairs, which is kind of never meant to be part of the deal. And um, they all sat down and it was just, uh, just shot a few frames and it's just goofy as hell. And then um, I have a lot of shoots where, um, <laughs> where uh, there's not a lot of production. And um, I get a call and it's like, you know, can you talk to Jason in a few hours? And uh, just tell him what you want to do. You can do like anything you want, you know? Which is always a dream as a photographer when someone tells you you can do anything you want. Um, until you gotta figure out what that thing is you want to do. <laughs> so I was like, um, and then, then I learned like getting on a call that you just want to sound as confident as possible and like maybe for some of y'all it like comes more naturally, but I don't know if it's like me or being from Texas and I'm like the short dude or being like, you know, like the respectful Asian kid, but I, I've just been kind of scared of people my whole life. And um, it's just, it's like recently, f partly from Mr. Trump's like love yourself thing, and then just from like fake it till you make it kind of thing, I just get on a call and it's like, hey Jason, how's it going? Big fan, man, great, great. So I have this idea, like let's meet up in Chinatown and um, you know, let's not talk specifics right now, but I've got these like great ideas. It's gonna be awesome, dude. <laughs> Um, I'll see you there tomorrow. Great, great. I don't have an address yet, but I'll, 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 I'll text you and I'll tell you a corner to meet. So then it's the same thing every time. We get there in the morning and it's like, um, oh damn, I should have thought this through more. <laughs> it's like walking around, desperate, you know, um, I tell my assistants I need a little personal time. I like walk around and I'm like, well, if it's the worst case scenario, he can, shoot on, he can sit on this slide. Uh, that could be good. And then, um, and then I look over at the, uh, this like, place where there's all these dudes playing this game, and I'm like, thank you, mom, for taking me to Chinese school all these years and making me know my mother tongue. And um, I talk to all of them, and they're like, yeah, okay, cool, whatever. So, so he comes and sits down, and he's kind of playing along, and they're like, um, intent on teaching him the game of, I believe this is called Go or something. So after I was done with the shoot, he was like trapped in by all these people for 10 more minutes while, like they didn't speak the same language either. But um, I, I think he, I hope he learned to play this game. Um, another situation where I was photographing um, Michael Sarah, which I was excited about, and um, I had all these ideas that I thought were cool. Got on a call with him, and he was really nice, but he's basically like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and later on, I see him in GQ, and he's like riding a bike, and his legs are open, he's wearing no pants, and there's like a black bar there. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure my ideas were not more embarrassing than the pantsless bike riding. Um, but it was sort of just trying to be resourceful and going to, uh, going to a dollar store. And, and I picked out all these like crazy things that I thought would work. But as I was walking out, this guy was buying some tinfoil. And it's like all my years of watching movies and TV and it's the only thing I can retain in life. I was like, oh, what's that movie? Um, M. Night Shyamalan, Swing for the Fences, Metal, nobody, Foil, Hat. Uh, the signs, yeah. So, so this this image was born, and, and um, he wouldn't he didn't really want to do much of any of my ideas, but he would put a foil on his cap. So I thought that was pretty cool. He did that. Tracy Morgan um, grew up in the projects, had uh, lost a lot of friends, sold crack, um, 
and I was photographing him for a book he did. And you know, Tracy Morgan, funny man, you know, I was pretty pumped about it. And when I went to meet him, what I didn't account for is that he had a cold, it was cold, and he was sitting there reliving his childhood, just feeling really kind of down. And he's like, oh, man, I don't want to do anything. Um, it's like I'm feeling kind of dark right now. Um, and then he's like, just, just take a picture of me like this, you know, and someone walked by him, he's like, hey, come talk to me, you know, just, just get this picture. So he's like, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like he's recreating a real um, street scene or, or, or something. And I said, I said, Tracy, we're gonna need to, you know, got a, like a little funny, 20, 30. I quantify things because of my uh, technical sense, but I was like, we got to do a little bit more. And um, I ended up putting like a little plastic dinosaur next to him. And um, he thought, he got real mad at me at first, but then he thought it was kind of funny and he just loosened up and got on this thing. And there we go. <laughs> it was, it was kind of good got better. Like he, he agreed. I thought he'd be pretty cool, and he agreed to like, he was filming a movie in New Orleans, and he agreed to like run for his life, like outside on the street. And as we were standing there, like this family was looking at us kind of across the street, just watching. And it was like this normal dude, this normal lady, kid number one, little brown haired girl, kid number two, brown haired girl, kid number three, brown haired girl, kid number four, this tall, lanky, red haired, red everything kid. And it was, it was just like some weird scene out of like a Will Ferrell movie or, or something. So I said, will you be in the picture, Will? Will you like carry him and run for it? And, and he, did, he did a couple times and I'm like, this is, this is not good because I had, I had like the football baby thing going in my head and it was like all awkward. I'm like, this is terrible. And Will did it a couple of times and he's like, okay, that's, that's good. You know, pretty good there. And um, I looked at it after and it's, it's um, Weird, it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, and really the, the next uh, few slides are just the, uh, like the three favorite, my three favorite movie lines from three people and they all kind of, they all said their, their movie line unsolicited. So I got the, I got San Diego from Will and I got something from Pulp Fiction from Sam Jackson and, and then uh, Christopher Walken said the cowbell thing in the condensed version of these stories. Um, what to say, what to say. Uh, it's always really nerve wracking. You know, these shoots are very short. One thing I learned from it is that when nervous and when not given a lot of time, there's this sense to want to like keep snapping pictures and keep snapping pictures because more seems better. Like more seems like you'll get a better picture. And the thing I did both times in this was just to take a moment and stop and kind of reflect and, and kind of have a conversation. And um, as you see my kind of awkward general nature in life, I think puts people at ease or something because then they don't feel like they need to be cool or I, I don't know what it is, but apparently I don't make people nervous, which is why I get a lot of jobs that I get. That's what photo editors tell me a lot. They're like, you know what? People like you, you don't make them nervous here's a touchy subject or here's a, here's a thing. Um, people don't mind you. And I'm like, yes, that's great. Um, <laughs> I wish I had something smarter to say, maybe in the Q&A or something. But um, the other thing I got out of it is I did get a pretty decent amount of time, 10 or 15 minutes with each person. And the, uh, the great thing about shooting a president is when you have some like douchebag you know, nobody like tell you like, oh, let's make this fast. You can say something like, well, President Clinton gave me 15 minutes, so maybe you could just, you know, <laughs> do me a favor. Um, Wheezy, I got Wheezy at full crazy. Um, right before prison, when he was still, you know, on everything. And um, this was for a Rolling Stone cover also, and he was so high that he couldn't physically stand still. And I'm using this medium format camera, and an inch is the difference between focus or not. So um, 
I was like, uh, why don't you just put your elbows like this? Put your elbows on your knees, and then that'll be a real contemplative moment. And um, that was the only way I can get him to stand still. So that's kind of where this came from. Um, sometimes when I do a shoot, especially if it's kind of a, a legend or someone who, um, who's amazing, um, I always think like, I always like want to create the image that is the iconic image of them forever. And um, that's really hard to do actually, so. But you gotta try, right? So, um, uh, and also I wanted to catch his ponytail. Um, what I didn't realize was Greg Ullman was a little bit before my time, but when I um, photographed them, I heard so much from, it's one of the images that I've gotten the most emails about and heard the most comments. And it helps me just realize in photos how powerful they are and they can be, even if they aren't to me. And then how much other people's photos mean to me sometimes and I talk to them about it and they're like, oh yeah, that's, you know, yeah, I shot that. Mm. Thanks, I'm glad you like it. Jimmy Fallon had this idea that he was gonna be this wild and crazy guy. Um, he wanted to drink a beer by Belushi's grave, so I was thinking like he'd be all drunk and you know, it'd be like really rad. And then when he showed up, I was really bummed out because he was dressed all dark and he was all like in a serious mood. And I realized that he had this different picture in his head. And um, at one point he asked if he could bring out his guitar and I usually just say yes. And I thought, you know, this is a terrible idea. Anytime someone brings out their guitar and they're not a musician, <laughs> seriously, right, you know? Um, so I saw it and I didn't really like the photo and, and, and it wasn't until I looked at it way later that I realized that it had a lot of meaning to him and I saw it completely different. And um, there's a lot of photos that I shoot that I'm in the moment that I think are really great and then I, I go back and, and realize I was just caught up in the moment. Um, but once in a while I'll find something that kind of has a better meaning than, than I knew at the time. So. Um, it, it means a lot to me that it means a lot to him. Uh, the Hulkster. Uh, and um, this is the last one. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut's like my favorite writer of all time. So when I got this shoot, it was really uh, exciting and I was very, very nervous. And um, the idea was to have him kind of in this ride and, and when we showed up, my assistant, who's much shorter than Mr. Vonnegut, who's known for being pretty tall, um, tried to squeeze into this thing, and he was like bending, it was all yoga looking, and he couldn't get in. And so we just kind of gave up this idea. And when uh, uh, Kurt Vonnegut came, he's like, you know, it'd be a great shot as if I sat in the, the thing. And we're like, well, you can try, but it's really small, it's really hard to get into, it's made for kids. He's like, no problem. So like this 70 something year old man, he gets up there and he's like, you know, squeezing around, shimming and doing all that stuff. And finally he squeezes in there and he says, um, this is a Rolling Stones shoe, right? Where's the cocaine? <laughs> and uh, the end, so thank you. Oh, I think I stay. Oh, I stay here. Stay, stay, I stay right here. there. Sorry, I went way over. I, um, um, uh, so I need to ask a technical question, which yeah. is the, the lighting in so many of your, your photos uh -huh. looks like there's no lighting. Uh -huh. and, and one of the things that w w when, when Brian Smith was giving his, uh, his seminar yesterday, he says he doesn't want people to sort of notice that the lighting is there. Mm -hmm. What, what kind of gave you that, that style and how do you achieve it? Um, I spent the first many years wanting uh, as much of my lighting and as many catch lights to show up in the eye as possible because I wanted to show that I could, you know, light. And then the more I did it, the more I realized that, like you said, I, I wanted to enhance the mood, but I don't ever want someone to look at a picture and say, you know, dude, that lighting's really great. Um, so it, I really um, try to use a lot of ambient light when I can, and when I can't, I tend to uh, recreate it a lot. You know, I um, usually use multiple sources, but they always come from, they always come from the same direction, or they always feel like they're coming from the same direction. There's a lot of cheating involved. Yeah. But I think in the end, I'm just trying to replicate 
like real, real light. Yeah. Um, and when you walk into any situation and, and you don't really know what the celebrity is going to be up for, you're usually walking with how many ideas? Um, well, it used to be that I was, I would just kind of try to surprise people. And now as the productions have gotten a little bit bigger, it's kind of expensive to surprise. Here's a, here's a lamb, that's half our budget. Oh, you don't want to do it? Um, san sandwich? <laughs> um, so, um, I, I usually have a lot of ideas in my head. You know, I'm, I'm kind of in life and in photography, I'm a worst case scenario person. So I always have like plan A to plan F. And I'm usually like, you know, probably crying if I'm past, you know, inside. You, you have to cry inside. You can't <laughs> externally cry. It's really bad for business. But um, I, I do, I have a lot of kind of backup plans and just doing this for a while, you usually get something, you know, and, and um, I always have like a lot of props and things ready to go, but I do try not to use them because A, I think it's stronger if I can do it without a prop, and B is like if I use up my prop this time, then I have to think of a new prop for next time. And, <laughs> so. One last thing, Peter okay. informed me that he's getting married next month, so congratulations, Peter. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.